God. Amen. And, and God said in the last days that they would depart from the faith. Amen. You got this thing now. And I, I, I know my, my wife listens to him. His name's, what's his name? Rick Warren. And I'm not against Rick Warren. Rick Warren, I believe, is on. But, you know, you've got to be careful. You can't, you can't mix religion and Islam and Christianity and all these things. There's, there's one Christ. There's one God. It's not Muhammad. His name is Jesus. He's the Son of the living God. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He's the reigning king. He's waiting on the command of his Father right now. He's about to step out from heaven. And he's telling this church today that you're not to depart from the faith. You know, I was going to tell you today, let's do, let, let's do a faith drill. Close your eyes and get up and just start walking by faith. You have to walk slow. You have to, uh, you have to kind of keep your arms out. You gotta, you, you, you know, you gotta listen for God and you gotta make sure that you don't go this way. You gotta stay straight so you don't fall down. But you know, that's the way we're gonna walk. Amen. We're gonna walk by faith. We're gonna trust God by faith. I'm not gonna live any other way but by faith. Come on, somebody. I'm gonna live by the faith of the Son of God. I'm gonna preach about faith. I'm gonna live faith. I'm gonna speak it. I'm gonna walk it. I'm gonna scream it. I'm gonna talk it. I'm gonna live by faith. I'm gonna live by the word. I'm going to live in the presence of God. I'm going to live like he wants me to live. I resist the devil. I fight against him, praise God, with the armor of God. And the, come on, somebody. We fight against him today. We put on, my God, stand up, I feel the Holy Ghost. We fight against him. We put on the whole armor of God. God said many will depart from the faith. Giving heed. The devil, seducing spirits, calling whatever. They're all devils. Giving heed to the devil. Being led off. Being led astray. Being drawn back out into the world. And miss out on what God has for you. Pornography church is going to hell. Oh my somebody. Pornography is going straight to the pits. All your X-rated, R-rated, all this junk that's on television. It's for the devil. It's his pleasure. Let me tell you what Anton LaVey said about Halloween before he died. Oh, I'm preaching now. I'm going to make you all mad before you leave, I hope. Amen. Let me tell you what Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, said about Halloween. Anton LaVey said this out of his very mouth not long before he died. He said, well, I'm glad that the, the, the children, uh, the Christians, uh, their parents of their children, hallelujah, the, the, their parents, he said, he said, I'm glad that they at least let uh, them worship the devil one day out of the year. Oh, my God, that's powerful. Out of the mouth of the devil himself. A man that said when he died, when he went off and, and he was dying, how the screams were torn, how he was screaming when he said, oh, when he looked into hell and said, oh, what have I done? He said, I'm so glad that those parents of those children at, at least let them worship the devil one day out of the year. Come on, somebody, I'm preaching the truth. But we're not to be unprepared. We're not to depart from the faith. We're not to be partakers, God said, of those things of the world. The Bible said that many would depart and their love would begin to grow cold. You can be seated. You, don't have to, you can be seated now. Their love would, would begin to grow cold. Some of your love, when I remember when I first came here, you, you know, some of y'all were full of a whole lot more love than you are now. Your hearts were full of love. But I can tell you what happened. You had so many battles. You had so many things happen in your life to your children, to your family. But I want to tell you right now that it's time to love again. Let God love through you again. And, and don't look inwardly. Don't look at yourself. Don't be in, in, in yourself. But look outwardly and reach out to those that are around you. And when you do, you'll see how much greater and how much better your life will go because you're not focusing on you. You're focusing on those around you. Let the love of God, he said, so let your light so shine before men. The love of God that they will see your good works, amen, and glorify. Come on, somebody, your Father in heaven. So many have departed from the values of God. The last days is, is, is I, I saw in my spirit today, is almost like that it, when we were in here worshiping God, I could almost see a writing. I said, God, what is that? He said, there's an outline. He said, I've got an outline. He said, there's an outline that's being portrayed, that's being, that's being written out right now. And no, I'm not talking to the world. The wicked are going to die. The wicked don't have a chance. 
But God said, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly, where shall they appear? Yesterday, my son, he went to the hunter safety course. I was so proud of him, and he had to put on these earplugs, these big orange earplugs. He went, he, he, he aced his exam, hunter safety course. He went out there for the first time. Don't get mad at me, son. I've got to use this because it's part of my message. But he went out there, and he had his shotgun. He, had his, you know, he ain't never shot a shotgun. Let me tell you something. You may have never done a lot of things for God, but when God puts it in your hand, there's power behind it. Amen. So he, he gets that shotgun, and I'm sitting there praying for him that will hit one. I said, Lord, just let him hit one. I had, I, you talking about having to build my faith up. His first shot, poof, he just blew that stink, just blew it to smithereens. I said, well, I don't have to worry about praying no more. Thank you, Jesus. So then the second shot, the second shot, he, he's got it kind of like this a little bit. And, and the guy this time not holding his shoulder. And I heard Michael say, pull. He went, you know what? He thought he missed. But, man, he hit that skeet and blew it into a million pieces. Little man's helped him shoot. Amen. Thank you, little man. You talking a little bit of shooting when he's young. But the third thing that happened is the, is the last shot was the best shot. We need to make this last moment the best moment. We, we, I don't care about your first shot or your second shot, but God said this last shot, you better make sure you hit your own target, amen? And it was the hardest one. It wasn't the easy one. That thing went out to the left and out over the bushes. It was about to go down. The went, <laughs> they went, split it into us. Oh, he's done three for three. I said, let's go home. Let's go. Let's go get us something to eat. She called Mama. She said, we're coming to eat some pizza. Glory to God. But my point is, is I'm making a point, two points, is, is this is the last day. And you and I have got to be point on and dead on. We've got to be loaded. We've got to be ready at all times because the enemy can come out of nowhere. But when he does, he's going to get some buckshot. Amen. He's going to get something he wasn't prepared for. Amen. Come on, somebody. God is telling us today not to depart from the faith. Amen. Secondly, one of the signs of the last days is that when people would turn their ears from the truth. Oh, I've heard that all my life. I don't believe all that. What people down there at that church are crazy? Hey, down there anointing people with oil, speaking in tongues, jumping and hollering and running. And people, I'm just off heard it all. If they know more about us than I know about it, I don't even know these people. But it's all good because it's all God. I don't know any other way to live. And brother, guess we're not going to live any other way. Young people, there's no other way to live. You're never happy. The happiest I am in the church is with you all. Happy as I am. And I'm with my wife too, but I'm happy. But I mean, as far as in the, in the center point of my life is God. He said that they would get people that would tell them what they wanted to hear. People walk into the church, they're dying and going to hell. They got everything in their life, living any way they want to live. They're ordaining them to do things that are ungodly, unholy, and they're, and they're saying everything's all right, and every one of them is going to split hell wide open. Everything ain't all right until they repent and get their life right with God, then they'll be all right. But they'll, they'll, the Bible says that they'll turn their ears from the truth. And this is the church that God warned us about in the end times. And, and some of you, we, we need to be warned. We need to remember from whence rock we were hewn. God said, look under the rock from which you were hewn. The church in the last day would be a worldly church. We see it with the Pope. We see it with the religious leaders of the world bringing in the one world religion. We see it today with, with the devil in the details of the church. Drawing in heresies, bringing in damnable doctrines, even denying the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Amen. Come on! And one of the greatest enemies of our life is that we're not to compromise. And I want to tell you right now, I, this preacher, I will never compromise the truth for a crowd, and don't you either. Amen. I remember one time when I was young, I didn't know no better. I jumped in a bunch of these people. And they were in a high school, a bunch of young people got right in the middle and started preaching. Jumped on the stage and started preaching to them. They all thought I was crazy. But man, it got their attention. They just, they just kind of scattered. They, of course, they called me all these names and stuff. I don't care. Back then, I didn't have no more sense than a donkey at a gate anyway, you know. But my point is, is we're not to compromise the truth. I remember that, you know, I've gone to some parties that, you know, that with my mom and dad before. It's been a while. And... You know, they'd come up to me, they'd offer me their brandy, their, their sherry. And, and I'd say, I mean, people that, you know, used to, you know, they, they knew who I was, what, how I used to live. My other friends, they'd come up and offer me their dope and their, and their, and, and their, and their, their, their pills and, and their parties. I don't need those things anymore. You don't, you, somebody listen to them, you don't need those things anymore. You don't need them. 
You don't need none of those. Some people don't come to this church because you get to talking about these things in their life and they know deep down inside they're convicted. I'll tell you somebody that gets more convicted about it around me than anybody else is my mother. My mother gets so convicted, I don't even have to say nothing about it. Just get around her. She'll get uneasy. But she knows I talk to him all the time. I said, you know, you, you can't, you know, a little 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 wine for your infirmity, not cool the rum, you know. I mean, you, you can't compromise. Are they going to die and go to hell? I hope not. It's between them and God. But my point is, you don't have to worry about it if you don't compromise. Lastly, you, I'm just about done. Lastly, the Bible talks about there would be a famine, not of, of the Word of God, but of hearing the Word of God. There would be a great famine, Steve, in the land. And the Word of God, look at me. If it's ever been preached, it's been pre we preach enough gospel in this church to say 15 words. It's been preached and it's been taught to just almost like it just gets piled up higher and deeper. You know what I'm talking about. But God wants the word to go forth more than he wants his next person saved. He said, send forth my word to my people. Feed my sheep. He told me years ago, Ava, he said, feed my sheep and water my camels. We got some camels in here. And we got some sheep. The Bible says in the last days, one of the great signs of the last days is that they would deny the power thereof, the power of God. And I want everybody in here to look at this preacher. Let me tell you right now. I'm not probably the last one, but I'm one of the, the last links to old time Pentecost that's in this world. There's a few. There's a few that understand. There's a few left. But I want you to know right now that the Holy Spirit is real. He is not an it. He is a person. He's standing right here beside me right now. His gifts are real. Speaking in tongues are real. His power is real. Everything he does is real. The Holy Ghost. The people will deny that power. They, the people deny the power. They'll come here. They'll say, man, them people are crazy. They're denying the power of God. We don't need another sermon. We don't need another word. We do, but we don't. But we, what we need is Paul said you need to understand that it's through demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. It's through the power of the Holy Ghost that we live our life that, that separates us all, oh, hallelujah, from everybody else. It's through the power of God. Glory be to the King. And the Spirit of God will let you know what's going on. He will reveal to you what's going on. So you say, Preacher, why are you preaching? Because last night I want to share with you. The Lord told me this. He said, Mark, he said, the train has made its last stop. And you can receive this or you cannot receive this. He said, you tell them whether they hear it or not, whether they receive it or not. He said, you tell them the train has made its last. I'm telling you people, you better wake up and you better be ready. Jesus is about to come. We've got our heads in the sand, my God, and, and everybody is, is, is saying, well, I want to do this, and well, I want to do this. I want to go here. I want to do this. I want this in my life. You better get your life right with God. And you better be ready. This preacher's come to tell you this morning. God said the train has made its final stop. And here's what blew my mind. He said, I'm sitting there, son. And he said, the whistle's blowing. That's where I got my scripture from about the oil. And this is where I got my message. You know what else he told me? He told, he said, the church, he said, he said, the church has raped my children. He said, he said, he was angry. He said, the church has fleeced my people. He said, they have compromised. He said, they have ordained things that are not of me. And he said, my whistle is blowing. You know what that means? He's telling people, you better come get some oil while the oil's still running. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost and so do you. He said, you better come get some oil while the oil's still running. That's why I preached about the oil. That's why I'm telling you, man, the Spirit of God is symbolic. The Spirit of God is, is speaking today. He's not speaking of Himself. He's not speaking to make a name for Himself. He's already got a name. He is speaking to let you know that there is a King whose name is Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is waiting for the command of His Father. The other night in Jerusalem, there was a terrible catastrophe. The Palestinians mobbed and they burnt the tomb of Joseph. I thought that was prophetic. They destroyed his tomb. They, 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 they set it on fire. Even they said even their own countrymen condemned that act against the tomb. But you know, that's a type. Joseph was a type of Christ. So what's going to happen in the end? This is, this is where I'm going to close. What's going to happen in the end to you and I, to us? One or two things. You're either going to be delivered, we're either going to be delivered, or you're going to be destroyed, and we're going to be destroyed. 
this morning. I really didn't want to talk about this last